Hello, I'm Dwayne Buser and welcome to NAC TV and this special interview. I'm joined by some of the members of the music department to discuss what goes into music production and music concerts. Guys, welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. I think we start by introducing ourselves. I'm Peter Lambert. I'm responsible for the music in the area of the Sikta Basel Barns and I'm also responsible for the music department at the administration office. And Clark. I'm Clark Schilder. I'm responsible for music training and development for our district of Basel area. Thanks, guys. Uh, first, we're going to take a quick preview of the latest DVD release and then we'll get back to the interview. Welcome back. Peter, I think we can start with you. Tell us a bit about your job in the music department and how you got interested in music in the first place. Well, my interest in music started as a child I, and also in the church. Uh, my parents were involved in the music work. My dad was a choir conductor in a congregation. My mom was an organist and I grew up hearing hymns and singing hymns with, along with them. So the love for it started there. Um, in the church, I was exposed to Sunday school singing, recorder a little bit as well. And then at high school, I really, really became passionate and started attending the choir conductor's classes immediately after confirmation. In fact, before confirmation and after confirmation, I was appointed as an assistant I think I was about 16 years old and um, became a choir conductor when I came to Cape Town after matric because I spent my childhood years in Muscle Bay. And when I came here, I was appointed choir conductor at the age of 18 and studied music at university and taught music for two and a half years at a school. And then the district apostle Graf asked me to come and work here full time. Prior to that, I was appointed as the head of music, but it was a part-time job which I did for about a year before starting full-time employment. That was in 1989, August 1989, it's a long time ago. And in fact, um, it was 25 years now, very recently. Oh, okay. So when I started, there was no department as such. I was the only person. My predecessors were Bishop Boot for many years and for a short while, the Alan Gould was also responsible um, looking after the department at the, at the administration office. And then over the, as the years went on, we added staff members and because the task, it entails administrative work, it entails organizational work, it entails um, creative work, training and development work, traveling. So it's a mix of things. And uh, we therefore need a department that can look after all the different aspects of the music work. Thank you, Peter. Um, Clark, you are involved in training from, from the ground up, so to speak. Um, can you tell us a bit about that and about the um, 2020 concept? Well, our district apostle have asked me to come on board in 2013 because 
the need for music training and development is so great. And uh, hence we have designed a concept or certain goals, objectives we set out there for the next seven years, basically. Um, for, for lack of a better word, we call it Concept 2020. So those goals and objectives, they are clear and they are communicated with the entire field. And year by year, we are actually implementing all those strategies that um, we've put in place in order to reach our goals and objectives set out. And that goes for all five music disciplines. Um, that is choir, orchestra, organ, Sunday school choir and recorder. Peter, we're focusing on the latest DVD release, All Your Workshop Prezi, which was a Chief Apostle concert. Um, where, where does one begin planning a concert like that? Well, one first needs to know what the event is, um, when it's going to happen, where it's going to happen. So if, as in this case, it's a Chief Apostle visit, the District Apostle would inform us that the Chief Apostle is coming, when he's coming, um, where the services would take place, whether it would be in Cape Town, which church, or if it's out of Cape Town. And in the case of this one, uh, we had the Divine Service in Retreat East and then a concert in Silvertown. So once you know you have the service, you have the concert, then it's a case of looking at the program and the people that will be involved with the program. So uh, if one starts with the concert, because it normally happens the day before, um, you'd look at which musical items you would like to include on the program. So one would start with the initial question, is there a theme running through the program, uh, or is it a mixed bag, a variety program? Uh, would it be very sacred in character, um, or is there some other point of emphasis that you have? Then you look at the people that would be involved, the conductors, the choirs. We have a concert choir that normally performs uh, for Chief Apostle, although as you can see for this time, this concert, we had uh, a new conductor because part of our aim is to develop the work by developing people. So, you know, you, you always have this long-term strategy that you, in, that you blend with events so that um, we have a successful event, but that it can also in some way signify some kind of progress, whether it's in the level of pieces that we do, the creativity, the quality, um, and then also displaying new talent. And that's all part of a process that has to be streamlined because you cannot suddenly use somebody uh, in a Chief Apostle event, for example, who hasn't had opportunity to develop and grow with other events. So that for us was, was significant that we have one of our young conductors, uh, he's also one of our composers, um, and um, it was his first opportunity, and we're happy with the, with the outcome. As far as the program is concerned, there we would have our team meeting in the department and then start brainstorming a little bit. And most of the items would come out of a combination of that brainstorming and then ongoing thinking, because you walk out of the meeting and uh, it plays on your mind, uh, you sometimes drive or you wake up in the middle of the night and an idea comes up. Uh, sometimes it's a thought that was born a long time ago. Uh, one of the items on this program, um, once I read with the words, not the half have I ever been told, um, that hymn has been on my mind for two or three years. And I've, I remember speaking to John Rodericks about two years ago and to Mario Fester in our department and saying to them, we should, we should do an arrangement of that hymn. And in fact, we had toyed with doing it in one or two earlier concerts, and it somehow never happened. And it materialized now, and something, the way it panned out, it tells us it was the right time okay. to happen. Yes. 
Clark, speaking of development um, within the disciplines, organ, choir, etc., where does one begin and, and how is that done? Well, we've just heard about the outcome. So obviously there's got to be a process that's got to be followed and various procedures put in place in order to achieve that outcome at the end of the day. So I'll just briefly um, speak about that process for each of the, the disciplines. For, for, in fact, for each of the disciplines, we have appointed advisors and their role is to take care of the discipline and to support the broader field out there. And um, for example, for choir, we would have a choir advisor who will support the, all the choir conductors in their respective bishop areas. And they will make sure that we have new talent coming through, new conductors, that there's learner conductor classes, that there's development for current conductors and the assistants, etc. that eventually we're able to take them through the various levels of performance, like in Clyde's case also. I would, uh, I would regard a chief apostle concert as one of our highest levels of performance, yes. of course. Okay, we've spoken about um, choirs um, and conducting a chief apostle concert being sort of the highest end goal. Um, can you tell us about the other disciplines? Well, if we look at the organ discipline, for example, we've got a beautiful development program running for our organists. Um, actually, two programs. One is for complete learner organists, and the other one is for people who started learning to play the organ already. Um, the one module covers learner organists in over a period of 45 lessons, and we can actually guarantee that a congregation would have an organist that can accompany the congregation. And the other one is where we have simplified the, some of the hymns in our organist manual, also for congregation accompaniment. And we've now invited our learner organist to once a month perform in a divine service. And I think that is absolutely great. And it's been met with great success out there also. And are, are they, do they play solo pieces or just accompaniment? They accompany the congregation for all the hymns being sung in the divine service. And they would also provide music before the divine service, oh, of okay. course. There is also the discipline of orchestra. When our members actually view our DVDs, our orchestra members display the strong desire, obviously, to find themselves in an environment like that. But it takes hard work and it takes years of practicing and learning to play your instrument. Hence, we've also implemented various development programs for our orchestra members in our congregations. For this year, for example, we've rolled out a what we call a key concept. Every month we cover a different key in music. And that is just to develop our orchestra members, especially those who don't have access to tutors out there. And that we've rolled out throughout our district of Basel area. And um, then there's also, on DVD, we also see our children performing. And um, so many of our children in our congregations also have that same yearning to have their voices heard on such stages. Um, hence, we've also developed busy developing our, our Sunday school choir conductors so that they can also deliver higher quality to our children in, in our congregations in developing their voices and their singing. And um, one great goal that we've also realized this year was to enable our children to sing for call up for our divine services. And that has also generated lots of interest in, in many children to participate in, in choir singing in our congregations. And we've also had great support from the parents. And then our final discipline, which is recorder. We've also decided that we would love to revive recorder playing again. And also making sure that the recorder is not only for kids, but for adults. I think, in fact, we had one of our congregations, they've undertaken a project where they've in every choir practice, they've taken 15 minutes 
to teach the choir members how to play the recorder. And after a few months, they could exhibit what those members have learned in a small concert, which I thought was phenomenal. So these are developments that will continue into the future. It's quite a process and a, a crucial process from starting from the bottom up, um, developing and nurturing music. Um, and in the end, the final goal is, is, is this concert. Yes. We don't only have to do a concert uh, in 2014. We need to do concerts in 2024 and 2034, if the law hasn't fetched us yet. And so you, you've got to keep developing and sowing so that you can reap. And it's easy to look at the DVD, to look at or attend the concert and see the, the results at the highest level of development, but one mustn't forget that you need to keep doing the things that are under the radar, and that's the constant uh, pushing in the background, constant sewing and practicing and learning and teaching and investing so that we can have this kind of result. Guys, thank you very much. Um, when we come back, we speak to Bradley, John and Mario. Hi there, welcome back. We're still gaining insight into the music department and their functions and how they put a concert together. Um, I'm joined by Mario Fester, Bradley Brooks and John Rodriguez. Start with you, Mario, if you can tell us your responsibilities in the music department. Well, currently I deputise in the music department. I'm also project manager for all events on the area music level. Um, that would be the public concerts, music hours and also the production of CDs and DVDs. Bradley? Yep. I am responsible for coordinating of the projects um, regarding um, the communication, the planning and the structure of putting together the event. So I work closely with Mario in making it a success. Okay. And John? Yeah. So my role is that of a composer, arranger and also producer. Quite simple. I just write music on a daily basis, um, whether it's new or arranging you know of existing hymns and now and then I would assist, assist Mario with the production side of things as well. Yeah. Can't be that simple though. <laughs> <laughs> no, not <either. laughs> And Mario, you've been here for about six years? Since 2009, January 2009, yes. And uh, you're involved, you've, the orchestra, as an amateur orchestra, has progressed quite a bit. Yes, I must, I must say with the help of everybody, the orchestra has actually excelled quite a bit and it brings a lot of joy to our hearts in the music department, yeah. Bradley, can you speak to me about the public concerts? That's about 10 years they've been, we've had public concerts? Yeah, the, I think our first concert could be, or took place in 2004. And uh, so for the past 10 years, we've been having public concerts in the Silvertown Auditorium. Um, and at that stage, one of our former colleagues, um, Claude Brown, used to be 
very much involved in the planning of these events. He's retired, as you know, and um, at the moment I'm form part of being responsible for my marketing point. Um, and obviously we advertise in, I think, <coughs> about 10 newspapers, two radio stations, um, and we also use NAC TV as a platform to advertise. Um, and it's been a pleasure um, interacting with all our role players from other organizations. And there's quite a keen followers of, of non-New Apostolic people who, who come to the public concerts. That's correct. Um, the, the purpose of it being a public concert is to appeal to those who perhaps doesn't um, come to one of our music um, concerts internally. Um, and that's the reason why we advertise um, and use the various <coughs> communication um, papers and the radios. And we have received with every single concert um, more in interest from the outside world, as we would term it. And um, it's, it's growing uh, with every single concert. And John, you um, composed the title work, All Your Works Shall Praise You, from this, one of the Psalms. Um, we spoke earlier uh, privately about that uh, a few days ago. Um, and you said it, it, I said it took a year, but you said not, not that long. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful piece, very richly orchestrated. Can you tell us a bit about the experience of composing or, or how, how that process? Yeah. Um... Well, um, this is actually a unique one in a way that the, um, the request actually came from outside of our borders, you know. Um, uh, I think the District Apostle Michael Krause sent a request via our District Apostle's office, you know, um, that they would um, like a, a composition, a fresh one, a new one, for their, for, as a finale for their concert surrounding the events of the 150th year anniversary of our church. That's how it came about, and then the Bishop Lambert came to me with, I think at the time, if I remember correctly, it was about two psalms, different texts that he came to me. And then we, the both of us decided that, um, well, we're going to go with Psalm 145, I think, um, all your works shall praise you, O Lord. Um, yeah, and the, the heading, there's actually a, a heading or a subtitle uh, in the psalm, that says, a, a song of God's majesty and love. And I wanted to sort of portray that in the music, hence its vastness, you know, in it, and the scope of the, the composition is, is, is quite um, majestic and, and grand. And I thought to myself, wow, um, I have to do that, you know, go big. Yeah. And that's exactly what I did. And um, also, from the outset, I wanted to be um, sort of a, a fusion, a blend of the of the the African and the European, oh, yeah, and the few, yes, yeah, th there we go, and and it's so in sort of an Afro um, um, Euro sort of fusion, if you like, and you would pick it up in the second part of the of of, of the composition where you know, I, I have this sort of rhythmical uh, uh, drive in 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 the strings and also punctuated by the brass at times, and at that time there's also um, at that above that you sort of have this. Uh, um, you know, the, the melody in the horn yes. and, and, and sort of a dialogue between the horn and the flute. Yes, yes, and that yes. leads to the, to the to actual, for me, the most beautiful part of the piece, uh, where you have the blend of the European and the African, you know, because I thought, well, seeing that it's going to be performed over there, I wanted it to, and, and, and it actually has, the music itself has its birth year in Africa, and being performed in Europe, I wanted to have a blend of the two, and that's what I did. Yeah. Yeah, with the with the rhythm and the yeah, and the percussion, the yeah. drums and that sort of thing, and the fugue-like um, theme in the choir, you oh, know, yes, above the, that. Yes, yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's it. And you started off as an organist. Well, well, I studied organ and composition. Both of it was my, you know, uh, interest, if you like. And I'm still an organist, <laughs> you know. So um, don't perform as much, but yeah. um, but I most of my uh, uh, um, efforts now concentrated in composition. Mario, when the District Apostle commissions a Chief Apostle concert uh, in the first meeting, from there, where do you begin? Where do you even start? Yeah, obviously, we first have to consider the role players involved in the concert like that, which choir will be singing. Obviously, we have only one orchestra here in Cape Town. And then we start with the program. Um, sometimes the District Apostle gives us a theme that gives us direction as to what the program should consist of. Um, a theme being like Jesus as the center point of the of the program or the spirit or you know our goal the victory over death whatever 
Yes. And then um, we, I must also say, it takes a lot of time to put a program together. And coupled with that, a lot of prayer also. It's not an, an easy process to put a program together that will appeal to everybody because we have to take all our different tastes and, and, and people's you know, feelings in consideration as well. And yeah, then we sit together as a department and we start discussing and brainstorming and sometimes it takes more than just a day <laughs> because it's a, it's a work in progress. And yeah, everybody's pretty much involved in that. New compositions come to light also. Um, as you heard earlier with all your works, that John gets commissioned to do something as well. So it involves everybody in the music department. And John will often arrange or rearrange some, some older works, sometimes by Ivan Deirdrex, etc. Uh, John, if you can talk to us a bit about um, orchestration. Yeah, so, so typically what would happen around the discussion is that, you know, um, we look at possibilities of new arrangements or even new compositions. And it depends a lot on the makeup of the program at that point in time. You know, um, will we you know, do we need a finale or do we need an opener or a second last item, whatever the case may be. And then we would then, once we decide that and establish that, we would um, then look at the scope of the arrangement or the composition with its large, large scale or medium size. Or, and the style also comes into play, um, whether it's a mixed choir, male choir, you know, whether we can use soloists and stuff like that. And then from there on, it's once we decide on, on the way forward, and it's basically up to me, uh, you know, to come up with something special, and that's that's basically my involvement. Yeah. And you reorchestrated um, the Lord God reigneth. Yeah. I think it was yeah. that um, the cash in the, the beginning. Yeah, that sort of to the you know um, the, the rumble in the background, and I heard you know the thunder and that type of thing, sort of depiction of that. Yeah. So it went off well. So yeah, it's a while now. I can't remember how yeah. long back. <laughs> that's two so, years. What's going yeah. on? Yeah. So. Yeah. That sounds like quite a process, uh, John. Mario, once a, a, the program has been decided on and finalized, what's next? Well, once we've discussed the program as a music department, we also have to think of who we want as conductors or who would be assigned as conductors for that specific event. And then the program together with the suggested um, role players will be taken to the district apostle for his blessing. And once he's happy and we have his blessing as well, then we start getting the ball rolling. Um, then the scheduling and the planning of rehearsals comes into effect, and I think Bradley can take us through that. Bradley, can you take us through the procedures? Yeah, I'm responsible for the, the planning of the rehearsals, the venues, the communication thereof. So normally once we have identified the, the orchestra players, and the choir that will be participating, it's a matter of putting the ball into action, um, the music, the repertoire, whether we have to order it, whether we have to hire it, um, the communication of who will be performing and making sure that they know of the planned events um, running up until the concert. And then also just getting everything together. Um, we have many, many role players that performs um, sometimes um, an individual is required maybe just to do one anthem, but you need to know as to what is happening. Um, and for me, the most important part is making sure that everybody knows what is happening, when, how they form part of this whole event, so that everybody can be on the same page. And there's a, a composer's work group. Um, or do they get involved, um, yourself and the, and the work group? Correct. In, re in rearranging pieces. John forms part of that work group and maybe can give and share a little bit more light. Yeah, so what would happen is if there's, you know, quite a bit of new work to be done on the program um, and it's a bit too much for me to, to, to handle, I would, you know, maybe um, ask one of the other guys within the group to help me and um, to do an arrangement like, you know, for, for the new production that we did, all your works. Um, yeah. I think Clyde, who's also the conductor, did an arrangement of his own um, piece, which is in the hymnal. Uh, I think it's titled This Rock is Jesus. So, um, yeah. So typically we would get one of them, one or two of them involved as well in the process. Yeah. Well, then our rehearsals start and we have Gavin Phillips, who's responsible for the Cape and Orchestra as well. So he starts with their rehearsals on their own. The choirs do their rehearsals on their own, away from the orchestra. And the children's choirs are very often involved also. Um, the planning that Bradley does is, needs to be very, very 
carefully done because I mean um, all our artists I would call them and 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 our members in the choirs in the orchestra they are volunteers and we have to consider their time and you know also our preparation needs to be done in such a way that we don't waste time and um, in a run up to an event like this there are many many challenges one of the challenges in our faith also is Satan is never leaving our preparation alone and we have to consider that and pray very very hard and our members it's amazing to see how they unite when we come together for an event like this and it brings a lot of success you feel the prayers of everybody around you within the group and it brings everybody together and it's such an amazing journey to go on um, then closer to the event things become a little bit more complex and a little bit more severe I can say the rehearsals and intense but it's amazing the, the, the feeling you have there and how everybody just pulls together um, I think Bradley can speak a bit more about the, the people involved and the kids especially, I think. Yeah, as Mario alluded to, the, we have two, two choirs and one orchestra and roughly we sit with around about 240, 250 um, performers on the stage um, that we're interacting with. So each one has their leaders and um, it's important that that communication process is taking place. Each one of us has a specific responsibility, but most times it, it overflows um, into um, helping each other. Um, on concert day, uh, there's responsibilities. We also have invitees that um, gets um, invited to the concert, which we also take responsibility, parking arrangements, mm -hmm. communication with uh, the role plays in Silvertown itself, um, which also forms part of this communication process, and then making sure that uh, the venue, the doors is open, uh, you know, something small as, as that, but it can be critical when you have 250 people um, standing outside waiting for their rehearsal. And because they are volunteers, we also want to make sure that we don't waste their time and that it's valuable and that once we are in rehearsal mode, that we have all our stakeholders present and that we are creating joy because ultimately we do this because we want to serve and we want to praise our God. And when our performers leave this experience, they must know that it was first, it was grace to be part of this event, but more than that, that the blessing attached to that may live long into their lives and may also have an effect on their family who makes the sacrifices with them. I think the, the music, de <coughs> music department together with the conductors involved in, in, in the production like this and the performers, they are enriched after such an event. Um, we speak a lot. Um, I think John, especially when it comes to interpretation, together with Bishop Lambert, gets very, very involved because obviously when we put the program together, we have a certain idea of what we want to achieve, the flavor, the depth, the spiritual content, all those kind of things comes together. It makes a beautiful blend. And the, the contribution from someone like John, who is very much in touch with interpretation of music, um, it adds a lot of value. Yeah. Maybe John can expand a bit on what I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah, um, I basically would help out with, especially um, like with the last concert with Clyde, for example, who, yes. who um, you know, me, I mean, also write the, you know, sort of the title um, theme to the, to, this, to the DVD and CD. You obviously a lot of interaction with, 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 with me regarding interpretation of the, of the composition, but also um, with the other arrangements uh, um, and music that's on. I would help out a little bit, give him an idea of, you know, um, in terms of interpretation of the various styles of, of music. So that, that would be my involvement there. And I think Clyde, that was his first as Chief Apostle concert as a conductor. Yes, that's correct. And I think he did your work uh, I think, justice. Um, if I'm, <laughs> you know, I think it's one of the better performances of one of my compositions on stage. I, I, I told him that and and I'm really, really pleased because obviously, um, as a composer and arranger, you're at the mercy of the performers. You know, they can make or break your, your, your work of art. So, um, you, a lot of times, you, you're at their mercy, most times, all the time, probably. And, yeah. and it can be a bit of nerve wracking experience, or it can be pleasing when it comes together. You know, and I think that was for me one of the more um, pleasant experiences. Uh, you know, sitting in the auditorium, being part of the audience and to experience um, the composition like that, it was very, very pleasing, I must say, yeah. It's obvious that a lot of hard work goes into this production, into a production, um, and, but obviously your, 
ultimate goal is to have a lasting effect with, with the production of a DVD, which could be around for 200, 100 years. Yeah, I think with, not just with the production of a DVD, with every concert and every event we have, we would like to have a long-term effect. And that's why preparation is important, because God blesses our preparation. But now working and being responsible for the Cape Town Choir that presented this specific concert, there has been a tremendous movement of the spirit that we could experience during this concert. And even speaking to some of the audience members, you know, I go into a production mode after this, this concert. I go into to the SABC studios to start with the sound and audio work. And normally after week two, I'm absolutely tired of a concert because it's the same thing over and over. But I must say, this specific concert had a great, great lasting effect on me. I couldn't stop watching because of the, the depth and the intensity of everybody's contribution as well. And also experiencing Clyde for the first time as a conductor was, was very special. And like I said earlier, hearing from the audience members, the members within the choir, the orchestra members, wow. What, what a concert, and that's how it should be, you know, as we go on in the Lord's work, every event should be better and better because that's how we know and that's how we sort of measure ourselves also. So hopefully from here we can just grow, yeah. yeah so it's about raising the benchmark. It's, yeah, that's one thing, raising the standard, but also raising our intensity of worshiping God. I think that that's the ultimate goal for us, yes. Yeah, so just to latch into what Mario said, um, I think that everybody, first of all for me as a, as a composer and as an artist, it was one of the most um, profound experiences. Not only was my, the music that was done, you know, the way it's been done, it's one of the best, one of the better performances of my music, but also as a, as a, as a, as a mere audience member, you know, um, I think I left there and I felt, um, you know, I had a spiritual experience beyond the musical experience only. And for me, that was that was different. I don't think I've ever felt like that before. It was a different experience. Okay. So. Yeah, I'm fortunate enough that I'm also one of the performers, and I get to sit on the stage and be part of the orchestra for these events. And um, I can tell you that with every single opportunity to play for a chief apostle concert, um, there's it's an emotional ride. The music takes you on this journey of worshiping God and it is purely grace that these performers has the opportunity to experience this beautiful heavenly atmosphere and we look forward to having more members uh, forming part of our choirs and orchestras. It will not remain the same. Ten years ago the orchestra that sat on the stage uh, was totally different and ten years into the future it will be so. Um, but. For me as a performer, for me as a new apostolic Christian, these opportunities are a step closer to being able to experience and interact with my God and looking forward to this reuniting feeling when we can all be together and sing that beautiful song together with our Lord. Guys, I'd like to thank you very much. I found that quite fascinating. Thank you. Thank you. And that's it from myself, Dwayne Buser. I'm sure the next time you go to a concert, you'll appreciate it a lot more. Thank you.